in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Our theme for this Lenten journey is entitled, Words Revisited. And a simple explanation is, is, is twofold. First of all, as Jesus is crucified, he makes seven statements, or he speaks seven words, as we often call them, from the cross. And so each week, beginning tonight and culminating with Good Friday, we are going to review those words, words revisited. Second, at least one of those statements is a direct reference to Psalm 22. And even when the words don't exactly match up, the vivid imagery in that psalm clearly portrays the suffering Savior that we see crucified on Calvary to the extent that whether it's through words spoken or words fulfilled, we will review the words of Psalm 22 as well. Once again, words revisited. Normally, you'll have them these Wednesdays printed for you, but because of the layout of our Ash Wednesday service, you don't have either in your bulletin. So if you have your Bibles or you can bring it up on your device on a, on a phone, we're looking at Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. We'll be there next week as well. But the first word that we revisit this evening is Luke 23 beginning at verse 32. Two others who were criminals were also taken away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place called Skull, they crucified him there with the criminals, one at his right and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. The word of the Lord. Actually, that pensive look was for another reason, because Jesus says, Father, forgive them. Forgive? Hold the phone. I know that Jesus does this in order to win forgiveness for me. I know he's the forgiveness guy, but for people who are doing this to him, I know it was just a couple weeks ago in church that we said, Jesus mentioned, love your enemies, but Aren't there limits to even that? To, to express forgiveness, especially for something so grievous. I mean, to me, it's stupid. It's not right. And it's just unthinkable. And then we have, again, words that we're going to revisit from Psalm 22 that also speak to this event. I'm just going to read a few select verses for you. But I am a worm and no man scorned by men and despised by people. Verse 7, all who see me mock me. I'm going to jump down to verse 16. Dogs gather around me, a gang of villains surrounds me. They have dug holes in my hands and feet. Are those words revisited on the cross? Most certainly. And then we hear Jesus say tonight, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Wow. I think that begs us to consider this evening, how likely are we to forgive. Now, I don't really have to ask, but for those of you who are feeling very saintly in nature, let's set aside the trivial if you think you're doing all right. Let's not talk about the lie or the simple theft or maybe the swear word. What about an unfaithful spouse? A major betrayal? What about an intentional undermining of your authority or your ability? Or a hefty theft of property, possession, or even life? 
How easy is it to forgive then to follow in Jesus' footsteps? For all honest with ourselves, we would all acknowledge it's not easy. It's not easy to forgive in moments like those. Jesus, as he looks down from the cross, he sees a fallen world, especially the sin-laden souls that are responsible for his crucifixion. That's Jesus as he looks down. God the Father, as he looks down, he sees the same fallen world. He sees the same people. But not only that, as God the Father looks down, he not only sees and beholds uh, uh, the fallen world, but he also beholds, God the Father beholds his only begotten and his dearly beloved Son, because there suspended between heaven and earth is the God-man, Jesus Christ himself. He not only sees him, but he hears him say these words, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they are doing. Because Jesus has ascended to the altar of this cross, and he's done so for you. Amen? Jesus has ascended to that altar for you, because of which not only are you included in those who don't know what they're doing, but you are also and especially one of them. Because Jesus says, Father, forgive them and what good news that is for you forgiveness for you forgiveness that flows in baptismal waters forgiveness that is spoken as we already heard in the absolution forgiveness that is poured out in a cup of blessing and his body which is broken on a cross is here tonight with and for you what great words to revisit and not just on this ash wednesday but Sunday in our worship. Every time we gather at his table, and even when you lay aside your human response and emotions, and you revisit those words with others, Father, forgive them. I forgive you. Those are words worth repeating. Those are words worth sharing and extending. Those are words worth cherishing. Forgiveness revisited. And forgiveness, it's yours in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We sing.